Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, bingo, we're back. <clears throat> it's the one o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel here on Think Tech. And we're talking about, what are we talking about? Community matters. And today, ooh, good topic. Carbon tax, the carbon tax in Hawaii. How would it work? What would it do with Tom Yamachika, the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii? Welcome back to the show, Tom. Thanks for having me on the show, Jay. Yeah, this is going to be a great discussion. So first of all, <clears throat> what is the carbon tax? I mean, it's, it's taxing carbon? Is that what it is? How does yeah, that well, the, it's, it's, it's kind of a variation on, on fuel taxes. You know how uh, we, we pay for uh, you know, various things when we, when we fill up at the gas station. But a carbon tax is a little bit more comprehensive because it's, it's imposed on all, you know, all fossil fuels, but it's based on the amount of CO2 uh, that burning the fossil fuel gets into the atmosphere. So, uh, like, coal is the worst. So, um, uh, coal uh, spews out a lot of CO2 per, um, per unit of energy that it produces, per, per British thermal unit. Uh, and then uh, the least is, um, uh, is natural gas. Mm. So there's kind of a spectrum between, uh, you know, those those two extremes, and uh, where where it falls uh, gives you the amount of tax that is put on the um, on the product. So now, you have to have a a list of things. Uh, you have to sort of a spectrum of how much carbon is in this or that or the other thing. And uh, am I right about this? So you have different kinds of coal. That's right. And different emissions from different kinds of coal. So you have to include multiple coal products on the spectrum, right? Right, as, as you would with uh, natural gas, gasoline, uh, naphtha, uh, other kinds of uh, you know, hydrocarbon you know, refined products. Why do, why do I feel that's hard to actually enforce? Because um, you've got to have self-reporting. You can't have the carbon man come out to see you and say, hmm. How much carbon are you spewing out today? No, but, but what, what the Tax Review Commission, when, when they looked at the issue about a year ago, they, they, they said, well, it's, it's not that tough because there are only a, a number of people uh, that are fuel distributors. Mm. And, and you, and you uh, like the way uh, you now impose fuel tax, you Im enforce the tax at the distribution point. Okay, so if I'm a driver and I drive down the highway burning fossil fuel, spewing carbon out of my exhaust pipe, I'm not going to get taxed. It's the guy who sold me the gas in the first place. That's He's right. going to get taxed. Right. It'll be the, the, the distribution point. So it's so. only one incident of tax in the, in the chain of distribution. Right. But, but, but the interesting part about it is like the way we have our system here. There are already four different types of tax that apply to fossil fuels, okay? The, we have a liquid fuel tax, okay? And that's for, that's for a highway fund. Uh, so every, anytime you go down to the, to the pump and you pay for gas, there's X number of cents. Uh, and, and, and that's actually the first two types because not only the state, but the county gets to impose liquid fuel tax, okay? Okay. And that's, and that's for either the state highway fund County Highway Fund. And that would only apply to fossil fuel, ordinary gasoline kind of fuel. Yeah, liquid fuel that's used to, pro to propel a, a motor vehicle on the highways. I suppose it's biodiesel. Uh, uh, there's carbon in biodiesel too, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But so, okay, anyway. So yeah, you, I'm, I'm not sure what the tax rate for that is. I mean, they have different tax rates mm -hmm. for, for different types of liquid fuels. Mm -hmm. but that, that's under current, under okay. current law. Okay. So uh, then there's what's called a barrel tax, okay? And that is not limited to liquid fuel. Uh, so that applies to, uh, you know, coal, natural gas, um, anything that can be burned for, you know, for, for fuel, anything that's classified as fossil fuel. Uh, and 
uh, it's it's applied to uh, to to gasoline on a uh, per barrel basis. Uh, I think it's, I think it's a dollar five per barrel, and then on a BTU equivalent basis to any other fuel. What's the last one? Uh, any other fuel. Any other fuel. Any other fossil fuel. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. So when it's gasoline, it's on the basis of a barrel, and we call it the barrel tax, and then it also applies to other fuel, as well. Yeah. On on a what uh, on an equivalent basis based on the amount of energy that it produces. BTU. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's the third. And then, of course, the fourth is GET, because it applies to everything. Okay. So we, so we have these four taxes that now apply to, uh, to fossil fuels. Okay. And this carbon tax would add a fifth. So if I, if I buy a gallon of gas at the pump and say it costs me, I don't know what it costs now, $3.75 or something, I don't know, whatever yeah. it is, how much of that is going to go to the, the four taxes you mentioned? Uh, actually, quite a bit. I, I mean, I, I haven't, you know, sorted all of it out, but I think um, uh, more than half. Wow. I think more than half would go to wow. taxes. Wow. Okay. So now the fifth tax, that would be the carbon tax. Right. And the carbon tax would that would again be on the distributor, right? Rather be, than me as the it driver. It would be paid by the distributor. So. Uh, but but it would be, of course it would be reflected in the price that you pay at the pump okay. when you, when you drive up to the to the uh, uh, you know the gas station and look at the pump and go oh boy I gotta pay this much yeah yeah okay so and that and that's on anything that emits carbon and there'd be a spectrum of rates there too right on how much carbon you're emitting from a given fuel or product or whatever yeah yeah. Um, does, does, it, does it go beyond fuels? I mean, somebody once made the argument at the time, I thought it was really off the wall, but that um, we, we bring in furniture with oil on it. Yeah. Uh, would, would it go to the oil on the furniture? Uh, not yet. But, I mean, again, it depends on how the tax is written. Mm. Because, like, for example, um, there is a federal tax on ozone depleting chemicals. You, you know, like, uh, so if you if you buy a, a refrigerator or a um, or a freezer, there there are uh, these freon gases that in the refrigeration system. That's right. So that's taxed on the federal level. Yeah, but but what it, what it also applies to is it applies to things that were manufactured using that type of ozone depleting chemical. So so like for example when you um, uh, when you when you are trying to manufacture an aircraft and you buy avionics right it turns out that the processes to make the avionics use a lot of cfc's so there's a lot of ozone depleting chemical tax imposed when you import avionics okay so that that is taxed to the manufacturer of the avionics yeah or whoever whoever brings it into the country basically okay and then that means that ultimately the the um, the airline will pay, you know, as it uh, it'll it'll fall down to the airline, and ultimately it'll fall down to the passenger, right? Because we have to pay for what he pays and so forth down the chain. Okay, yes. that already exists, huh? That already exists, and that's been a successful tax in the sense that we don't have so much uh, ozone anymore. Hmm? Well, um, that's that's debatable, but okay. at least the tax is there. Okay, all right. <laughs> Carbon is a problem not solved at all. That, that's right. And, uh, you know, getting people to buy into a carbon tax has had some problems. Uh, for example, in, 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 in France, you know, the, the, the city's now turned into an inferno because uh, the French president uh, had proposed this new carbon tax, I mean, it, which, which amounts to like maybe 25 cents a gallon. Okay. But, but you know, uh, uh, people wearing these, uh, you know, yellow vests. Uh, Guillet Jean, <laughs> yellow vests. <laughs> yeah, they, they 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 went into the street, you know, started torching things, you know, flipped cars over. Total mayhem, total mayhem in Paris. I, I really wonder. And and then of course he he backed off on that, um, but they still protested anyway, and the protests continue and. Uh, 
I don't know how he's going to, you know, bring things back to balance. Well, yeah, I mean, he he, he said he'd um, uh, he'd hold off on enforcing the tax for like, you know, uh, he he's, he said let's have a moratorium, but that means it comes it's, it's coming back. Sure. Right. So I think that's the part they didn't like. You know, that's the problem. I mean, we have COP24 is going on right now in Poland, um, and which should be more advanced than COP20 20 or 21 a few years ago. Um, I think Donald Trump has really gotten in the way of, of, the, um, of the COP meetings and, and efforts to ameliorate global warming. And here Macron goes out and he, he, he actually tries something on a national level for France, and this is what he gets for his trouble. Uh, so people are really not committed to dealing with global warming and carbon in the atmosphere. Are yeah, they? you know the, the way uh, the way it has been described is it's, it's, it's kind of it's kind of very telling. I mean, you know, we're, we're glad we have leaders that are thinking about the end of the world <laughs> and trying to prevent the end of the world. <laughs> but most of the people are trying to make it till the end of next week. <laughs> they got to pay. You know, they got they got they got to pay. Uh, to put it, put food on the table, uh, they got to pay the rent. Uh, they they have to, uh, you know, deal with, you know, keeping the lights on. You know, uh, a lot of these causes are not really resounding with those types of people. I mean, if you live in the suburbs, which a lot of you know working people do, you got to pay for gas. Yeah. To 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 go to work, um, uh, and, and 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 don't tell me, yeah, they can ride rail. <laughs> I, I, I find this ultimately very tragic because, because climate change is relentless, it's happening. And, uh, yeah, to, people, para to paraphrase Marie Antoinette, right? Let them ride rail. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, let them eat cake, too. <laughs> so, uh, you know, leadership means trying to make the people understand. You know, it's, it's like rail in Hawaii because in Hawaii, the government foisted rail on the people before the people knew what they were getting into. And that's why there's all this contention, in my view. So the same thing here. He tried to foist the, uh, the carbon tax on, on the citizens of France, La Belle France, um, before they really knew what, what, what it would cost them and how it would affect their lives. And that's why he got the, the pushback. And that could happen elsewhere, too. Uh, that could happen in the United States, don't you think? Oh yeah. Um, uh, recently, Washington State, uh, uh, in the past general election, had a referendum of sorts on whether they would adopt a carbon tax. Failed miserably. It failed miserably. No. Um, and the question then becomes: Well, would it be? You know, could it be replicated in other states? Uh, you know, could Hawaii, because of its penchant for leading the world in environmental issues, uh, be the first to, you know, jump out ahead of the fray and adopt a carbon tax. I mean, that's what the Tax Review Commission report said. Mm. Um, you know, phrasing it in those terms. But you know, is that is that really what the people want? Well, let's examine it and see how we feel, you and me, about how you know. And I, I know your your you're, the Tax Foundation looks to avoid taxes that are really not necessary. So you start out with a with a a bias against a given tax until it can be proven as valuable. Yeah. Uh, am I right about that? Yeah, um, and and I, and you know the the way I'm looking at it is, you know, a, a a new carbon tax would be would be a big burden, but I think it would be a big burden because the current proposal is to layer it on top of you know the four taxes that are already uh, yeah. burden. Which some of which are directly related to the same purpose. I mean, for example, the barrel tax, the original purpose of the barrel tax was supposed to, you know, do environmental things and protect the environment, including climate change. You know? So now if you add a carbon tax on top of the barrel tax, in large part you're duplicating the tax, aren't you? Oh, yeah. So, so, so the, right, right now we have a patchwork and we need to kind of like re-examine re what's a real priority and. And, and, and act accordingly. Yeah. Well, um, let's. Uh, so, is there any state in the union that has successfully enacted and implemented a barrel, uh, rather a, a, a carbon tax? Not that I'm aware of. No. Hmm. Probably for the reasons we've been talking about. And so, right now in Hawaii, um, there's a legislator who has suggested a bill who will introduce or already has 
introduced a, a, a carbon tax bill into the legislature for consideration in the 2019 session, am I right? Oh, yes. Uh, it, it, could, it could come from a, num a number of sources because the, uh, the Hawaii Climate Change Commission had six legislators in it. Uh, but, um, you know, Senator Rhodes, uh, Carl Rhodes, has gone on record already in, as saying that he'll introduce uh, a carbon tax bill. Mm. There actually, it, there was actually one introduced last session, uh, but it, but it didn't, it didn't make the first committee hearing. Okay, let's take a short break, Tom, and we'll come back and we'll, we'll enter into uh, Christmas future <laughs> to see what would happen. Okay, if such a bill actually was enacted and signed into law by Governor Ige in this session, ooh, ooh, I'm not sure we want to go there, but let's let's take a look after this short break. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. And aloha. My name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring you the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation, and we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m., here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. We are so happy to be here with, uh, with Tom Yamachika of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, Talking about the possibility of a carbon tax, which has been a discussion for a long time, but I don't think people really know how it would work. So let's assume, I'm making a lot of assumptions, you can correct my assumptions. Let's assume that this, um, the, the people concerned in the legislature with climate change want to enact a barrel tax. This, I think that's a I'm safe sorry, assumption. I'm sorry, a carbon tax yeah. this year. Um, and let's assume that it, it passes both houses and all those committees, whatnot, and, and the governor signs it. What, what do you think it would look like, this carbon tax? Well, you know, uh, let's, let's kind of pause a little bit before we get all the way to the finish line. I, I think initially you, you're going to have some uh, disagreements as to uh, where the tax is supposed to go because I, I think, you know, if you uh, put this up uh, for consideration, there, there's going to be a feeding frenzy as to who is going to get the revenue from it, okay? What are the possibilities? Department of Transportation, for example, uh, they get the fuel tax now. So and they get part of the barrel tax too, I think. Uh, no. Oh, no. well, that's right, they wanted it. But they, but the they, but session, they didn't get but it. They never got it, yeah. okay. Uh, so, so the Department of Transportation is gonna say, well, hey, this is about wear, wear and tear on the roads, and, and you know, we, want, uh, we want part of the revenue. And you have the farmers. Farmers are going to, farmers are going to consider that they're exempt from uh, the, the fuel tax now because they're not doing work that impacts the highways. And so they say, well, why, why should this, this fall on us? And, and uh, you know, the, the other side of the story is, well, you're running machinery. Uh, uh, the, the machinery emits CO2 into the atmosphere. So you're just as liable or you're just as responsible as that person who just drove down the car in a semi. Okay, um, will they will they like that answer? Probably not. Uh, then they're the counties. Okay, so 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 if you're going to uh, load up on fossil fuels, uh, the counties right now have a piece of the action as uh, as they get to uh, apply a, a liquid fuel tax. So how are they going to fare? Are they going to get a piece of this? Uh, is the county highway fund going to get a piece of this? Is any, anything in the county, county going to get a piece of this? Um, and then there are um, the, uh, the people who are concerned about the environment. Uh, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, they get, uh, they get a piece of uh, what, what comes out of the barrel tax. 
right? So uh, they are going to, you know, be right up there, and they're, they're going to be saying, well, you know, this this is all about uh, damage to the environment, and when we and we and we fix it, you know, we uh, are out there planting trees and all that kind of stuff to to deal with the effects of. Uh, of, of carbon pollution. Same way the barrel tax is supposed to deal with, with the environment um, and with um, making things green. Um, although yeah, that hasn't really happened. And, and, half, and half the barrel tax goes into the general fund. Right, which is not what was intended at all. So you have the possibility of a hijack on any of these taxes. Hijack into the general fund. Yeah. Yeah, or, or other places. You know, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, that so that's so. Big question is where does the tax money go? Right. Um, who gets it? I suppose. Uh, what is it? What is it used for? Um, so somebody's going to have to make a statement of that, and uh, and I think everybody will re be referring back to the barrel taxes. You know, it's like <clears throat> I went to law school. I had a professor in criminal law, as it were, and he said when the legislature passes a statute, it should say at the bottom, this one. We really mean, okay. <laughs> and he said, and if they care a lot, they should say this one. We really, really mean. So, you know, if you want to avoid the the kind of fragmented result that the barrel tax has had, where nobody, really, you know, that the original purpose of the of the tax has gone in ten directions, um, that we should have some statement at the bottom of the carbon tax bill that says we we really mean it. And this is where we want it to go, and don't change it. <laughs> Speaking to future sessions and future legislators. Yeah, which, which, which will never happen. Never happen, because yeah. they reserve the right to change anything about anything, so. Yeah, that's part of being, that's part of being a legislator. I guess so. Anyway, so, all right, so that's, that's one thing. But, you know, we have to put this in perspective. The barrel tax, I'm sorry, <laughs> correct me, hit me. The carbon tax is intended to discourage the use of carbon. It's intended to get on board with, with global climate change and COP24 or whatever COP you're talking about. It's intended to, to be a, leader, a leadership point for Hawaii to say to the world, yes, we can, we can have a carbon tax and we can discourage the, the use of carbon and emissions from carbon. Isn't that what really counts here? Will, will that work? Um, or are we just um, you know, blowing in the wind, literally? Well, again, you know, it really depends on who you care about. Mm -hmm. You know, do, do, do you really care about these, you know, lofty uh, global goals, or are you really caring about your people? Because, because, because your people are the ones who have to go to work every day from, from Eva Beach or, or Pukalani or, you know, wherever they're coming from. And, and how are you going to help them do that if, if, if you're going to, you know, really lay into their... Uh, you know, what is, a, what is a necessity for them in, in, in terms of how they make their livelihood? Well, that's, a, that, that's the same thing as in France. You know, they're not going to be concerned about the ultimate mm, success of the world, the survival of the, of the human race. They're, they're going to be concerned about getting to work tomorrow. Um, they're going to be concerned about their own personal family finances. And, so, and, that's, and, and that's enough for them to torch the place. Yeah, I mean, we, we can have a real public out outcry against such a tax, don't you think? Yeah, and, and, and so, and so uh, that really, I think, comes back to, well, uh, you know, who's the government supposed to serve, right? Uh, they're supposed to serve the people. The, uh, the legislators are there to kind of have, you know, both the short-term and long-term interests of the people at heart. Um, and so they, they, they really have to figure out a way to sell this. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I, the purpose, looking at it from the 50,000-foot level, where all that stuff gathers, <laughs> look, look at it from the 50,000-foot level and the purpose of this tax, really, I mean, putting, raising revenue aside, because, you know, the legislature always wants to raise revenue somehow and not, and not be seen as raising revenue. Um, it's, it's really for the benefit of the world in general. It's to save the world. It's, the, it's to save us against climate change, which is... You know, becoming more of a threat all the time. Um, but isn't that, Tom, isn't that really um, in, within the purview of the federal government? If there is going to be a, a carbon tax, shouldn't, shouldn't that be at the federal level? Why should one little state in the middle of the Pacific, you know, that, that, that has clean air 
and all that. Why, why should we care about you know, the future of the world? It's, well, it's, we, it's, because, because we have to lead the world. I mean, that's what, that's what the proponents are going so to say. So it's a leadership thing, but... Yeah, like we, 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 led the, we led the nation in prepaid health care. Why can't we lead the nation in this, too, this, this environmental issue? It's an expensive price to pay to be able to say to yourself, I'm leading the nation now, uh, the world. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it is. And, and people may not be willing to pay that price. They may say, I don't care. But some, if, if the federal government doesn't want to do it, why should I want to do it? Isn't this really a federal matter, a federal issue, or United Nations or something, other than one little tiny state? You know, and, you know, we can't have that much effect on things. If we, if we, uh, but we got to start somewhere. Okay, <laughs> we got to start somewhere. I love when I get you to make these arguments. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> we do this. Uh, we set a price on it, and the price is intended not so much to raise revenue, but to discourage people from using carbon products, emitting carbon. Okay, and that would help in reaching 100% by 2045. It would help uh, to move to electric vehicles, probably on the highways. Uh, it would help. Well, I mean, you know, electric vehicles, let's, let's kind of not go there just yet because uh, electric vehicles just take the electricity that's produced by somebody else. Of course. Okay. And, and the, uh, the electric companies. It depends on how they generate the electricity. Yeah, right now they, right now they burn bunker fuel. Right. Which is, uh, which is a fossil fuel, as you, as you are well aware. Yeah. Yeah, and probably has more hydrocarbons, uh, you know, per uh, per per cubic inch than uh, than even regular fuel. I mean, a, a, a regular. So it's a mixed bag to yeah. say uh, we're going to impose a, a carbon tax on on gasoline, or we're going to, in order to incentivize electric vehicles when the electric vehicles are running on another kind of fossil fuel. That may change in the future, but for yeah. now, it's it's hard to make that case. Uh, so, I mean, my, my gadfly question I posed to you earlier still stands. Exactly why would we want to do this? I mean, if the, if the legislature wants to raise revenue, why doesn't it just increase the income tax? That's less regressive, isn't it? Um, yes. It seems more fair to a state where you have and, and that's, diversity and that's one of the, income. And that's one of the biggest problems of a carbon tax. It's regressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it's not going to hit... Uh, you know the wealthy harder than the uh, the middle class. It'll it, it'll be the or the lower middle class. It'll be the other way around. Yeah. Okay. So here we have just drawing a geographical map. I don't know if this is happening in Europe. Obviously, it's not happening in France right now. <laughs> um, and there are other countries that have adopted it. There are. Okay. Yeah. Well, good for them. Points for them. Do you know the countries? Uh, I think Japan is one. Uh, there are some other European countries that have. Uh, I think just just a handful. So anyway, so we don't have any state uh, in the in on the mainland that uh, is doing this. We have the possibility it'll happen here, but I think there'll be plenty of pushback on it, just on an economic and tax policy basis. Mm -hmm. um, and why me? Why do I care? Kind of basis. Uh, we have the federal government under Trump. It's not going to enact a, a carbon tax. The Republicans aren't. Am I right? They're not going to do that. It, Maybe the next administration, but not, yeah, it's certainly doubtful. not yeah. this one. Not going to happen. I mean, we pulled out of COP anyway. Um, so, um, gee whiz, um, this isn't moving at the speed we'd like to see. I mean, if we are environmentalists, if we are looking at climate change, um, isn't, isn't, isn't it appropriate, though, to make a, a little wee, little wee carbon tax, little tiny carbon tax? and just hold it there and see what happens, and then we make it bigger later. That's always a possibility. I mean... Taxes never, you know, get repealed. A tax bill never gets repealed. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what happened to the barrel tax. It started off at, at five cents per barrel, which was, you know, uh, enough to get its initial job done, but, but not, not, in, not big enough to be a problem. Then it came to a dollar five, which is, a, you know, 21 times uh, what, it, what it used to be. Yeah. And and most of most of that was, like I said, for general revenue raising. Yeah. So is that what's going to happen with this? We, we don't know. We'll have to see. No. But uh, what do you think? Can you want to make a projection for me on how you think this is going to go? Uh, will it get passed at all? Uh, if it is passed, what, what will the amount be? Uh, you know, will it be a little or a bigger amount? And what will the people say about it? 
I think there's going to be a lot of debate. Um, I think people first have to understand what it is and how it will affect them. And uh, I think once they do, they'll start pushing back. Because we, we have a lot of taxes already that we pay in, uh, in paradise. Yeah, we're, we're one of the highest uh, tax rates in the country as far as state income tax is concerned. Yeah, right? and then also overall burden is, you know, we're, we're not too shabby either. Yeah, right, and our gross excise tax is gross, actually. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. So, at the same time, with all of that, we don't have enough money to pave the roads, to, you know, handle the homeless, to make payments to the state employees' retirement system. <laughs> we don't have enough bridges, money to yeah. do the regular business of a state or a, or a city. Um, so I'm not sure people Let's keep want up to our educational more tax. facilities. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be an exciting session, isn't it? I'm sure it will. Would you come and talk to us about it? Of course. Thank you, Tom Yamachika, President of Tax Foundation of Hawaii, watching out for us. Thanks so much.